Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw. Today we're going to be continuing the Iron Maiden discography with, of course, the 2006 release entitled A Matter of Life and Death. Let's jump into this album. So three years after The Dance of Death, we finally get another full-length release entitled A Matter of Life and Death. So the 2003 release title-wise and now the 2006 release we're talking about today, very similar, both have the word death within them. Except 2006 release, A Matter of Life and Death, we're talking about today, has life and death. So that's pretty interesting. And this is another Iron Maiden record that does not have an actual song on the album titled A Matter of Life and Death. A little, uh, little bit of info if you don't know that. So it's one of those few albums that doesn't have an actual song titled after the actual title of the record. For me personally, this album reminds me a lot of the last release, The Dance of Death, uh, for a couple different reasons. For one, the the use of the three guitar lineup is very heavily used on both records. And for me personally, the sound of the record and the production of both records uh, are very similar in my own in my personal opinion. And so if you were to put the last release and now a matter of life and death on a double like adult like a double album and release it and i bet people that are not really huge fans of iron maiden would probably say it's they recorded the stuff at the same time am i saying that a matter of life and death the follow up to the last record the dance of death is a bad record i'm not saying that at all i'm saying is it feels like that they really took what really worked for their last record and really pushed it for this rest this for this next record sorry about that and really just said this this last record we did worked so let's basically make it a very unique and a very standout record but make it a continuation because this album has a lot of melodies that we're used to we're, we're used to having from iron maiden but i think the way that they approach the songwriting for this album especially on some intros and some of the ways they end this album and some of the sections throughout this record I feel like they took a unique path and a unique way to kind of approach those. Now, I'm not saying it's brand new, 100% new ideas from Iron Maiden because we kind of know what to expect a lot in a lot of cases. But I think that some of the directions and some of the things, some of the ways they approached, some of the tracks on this record on A Matter of Life and Death, I think are very unique and they do stand out because I feel like these songs have some unique sections that I think really brings me back to listening to the songs because if they would just do the traditional Iron Maiden thing that we're used to knowing like how they start an out like start a track very heavy and aggressive and then it gets to the chorus and it's very melodic and it's beautiful and it's you know, it's all it's all high and you know mighty and stuff and we're singing along with Bruce Dickinson on the chorus and then it goes to a solo and then a solo and then the final chorus then a final verse and chorus then we're done uh, then I think if that was on this record a lot, I would not be really enjoying this record that much. I would be saying, I wish I had more variety. I wish these tracks kind of expanded more, did more things. And that's what this album does. There are songs on this album that are very lengthy. And we've seen that in the past before. So seeing some of the tracks on this album are seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes. I'm like, hmm... Uh, I'm going to be cautious, but I'm going to go in with an open mind and see how these tracks deliver because in Iron Maiden's past, we have seen lengthy tracks that have worked, in my personal opinion, and some that could have been shorter. They're great songs, but they could have been shorter to really, I think, you know, keep the momentum and not really keep dragging it along, in my personal opinion. But for the most part, they're past uh, songs that have exceeded the 7, 8 minute plus, 9 minute plus, 10 minute plus uh, route have been good for the most part. So for a matter of life and death, all of the tracks, in my personal opinion, feel right at the links they are. I don't personally think that there's a song I could randomly pick that has like seven or eight minutes and go, okay, here's all the sections. Let's take this section out. This doesn't work here. It feels like all the sections work. If you took any random song with a pretty good link, like seven or eight minutes and took out a section, you may be missing out on a section that really made that song work. Because listening to these songs, these songs work. If you take out a section or two to make it shorter, like a seven, eight minute track to down to five to six minutes, we took out, we took out a section or two and we're going to shorten it up. Maybe we're missing a section that really builds the song up. Maybe that's a section that really needs to be there. So for me, the links on these, these tracks and the songs in general, I think are great and they all they all work in my personal opinion this is a very fluent album an album that kind of flows in my in my own personal opinion uh, uh, correctly and it sounds right and there was not one point where i went that song could be uh, like the like the, the ending track or this song could be more in the front of the album but where the songs are and how these songs are put together 
I enjoy them, and I'm going to come back to this record from time to time and enjoy them. I'm going to go through my some of my favorite tracks. Some of my, just my favorite tracks. Let's just do that. <laughs> kind of just rambling on here. Uh, so, my personal favorite tracks that I go through here. Different world. Now, what I really like about Iron Maiden is that they always start off albums with a very sh with a shorter track compared to most of the songs in the rest of the record. But the songs are epic, and they kind of set you up for another Iron Maiden record. So, Different World, in my personal opinion, is a great track. Four minutes and seventeen seconds. Great opening track. It's got a great opener, a great opening riff, a great um, a, a great little groove they're going on with. Uh, great groove. <laughs> losing my train of thought. A great groove to start off the track, and it kind of holds all the way through. Um, but for me, I wish that maybe this song was a little bit longer. But 4 minutes and 17 seconds, I think we're good with where it's at there. These colors don't run. Now, what I like about this is that we're jumping from a 4-minute track to an almost 7-minute track. And these and these colors don't run. I really enjoy the chorus. Bruce Dickinson does fantastic uh, work on the chorus. I really enjoy his uh, vocal performance on this track. And the guitar melodies and just the way that the guitars are built on this track. I really like that a lot. It's really, really catchy. The guitars throughout this whole record are very catchy. Now we're getting even more lengthy tracks. Brighter Than a Thousand Suns, 8 minutes and 44 seconds. Another fantastic track. The Longest Day, 7 minutes and 48 seconds. Track number 5. Track number 7, The, Re the, Re the Reincarnation of Benjamin Brig. I think that's how you pronounce that. I'm probably butchering that. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the last name there. 7 minutes and 21 seconds. Track number eight, For the Greater Good of God, I love this track. Nine minutes and 23 seconds, I believe that's the longest song on the album. Yes, um, it's only it's only, long, it's only the longest song by three seconds, but For the Greater Good of God, I feel like was a fantastic track. There's a lot of sections on this track, so when you're, when you're about to listen to this album, you're going to get to this song. Make sure you sit down and really pay attention because you'll be hearing every little bits and pieces because it took me about a couple of listens, about... I would say about almost three listens because the second listen I started to understand more of this very lengthy track. But after the third listen, I understood what was happening and everything worked like it was supposed to. So got to give it props to that. But don't listen to any of the lengthy tracks on this album just like while you're doing something else. If you, re you really need to pay attention to these tracks to really appreciate them and enjoy them in my personal opinion because there's a lot of things that you could miss if you're just kind of doing stuff and it's playing in the background. So when you're listening to this album, you get to those very lengthy tracks, clocking it over seven minutes plus, really pay attention, really listen. You'll get, you'll get everything and love it. Lord of Light, track number nine, great track. Track number 10, The Legacy, the second longest song, only three seconds less than the, than the actual longest track. Um, the Legacy has a very long opening. That's the only thing, in my personal opinion, on this record that I wish it wasn't as a very long opening. I wanted it, I wanted it to actually build faster and get to those riffs and get to those mom those monumental moments for a final Iron Maiden track. But after listening to the song over and over and over, I still wish it would the build the build up was faster. But it's building up slowly. But it's building to something big. It's building to something great. And when it actually gets there, you're loving it. This track is great. It ends this album. And it really shows that once again, Iron Maiden, 14 albums in, as this is album number 14, they're not slowing down. And this is an, uh, another fantastic, in my personal opinion, Iron Maiden record with some great songs, some great chemistry, some great writing, and some great lyrical content from the band. Let's go through the extra personnel itself. We already know, we already know what's going to be said because this review has been positive. Bruce Dickinson on vocals. The man is a legend. He is doing another fantastic job once again on this album. I really, I really enjoyed more of the courses on this album than I did on the previous record. I really enjoy more of the courses and what Bruce Dickinson brought to the courses, um, the courses on these songs throughout this record. So, got to give him props there. And once again, his operatic voice, his vocal style. Is once again legend is once again a legendary performance. Once again on this record, he's doing a fantastic job. Dave Murray, Adrian Smith, Yannick Gers. Adrian Smith did a guitar synthesizer on "Brighter Than a Thousand Suns," but basically Dave Murray, Adrian Smith, and Yannick Gers on guitar. You know, like I said earlier in this review and talking about their the past albums from the start of Brave New World up to this point. So now we're on the third 
release uh, uh, since they had the three-man lineup of guitars. They've been really using the three-guitar lineup to the fullest potential they could. And once again on this record, they're using the three-guitar man lineup to the fullest potential, and they're not making these songs less groovy and less melodic and less hectic. They're making these songs more... In, there's more involvement with all three guitars. Like, they're all doing something different. They all have involvement throughout these tracks, and it's not like, okay, okay, one guy gets to play melodies, and the other two guys got to play rhythm. Okay, well, this section will have two guitars doing, a, like, a melodic thing, and then the, then we'll do a rhythm over here. And so it's like the, the one guitar doesn't have a lot going on, the other two have a lot going on. They're all three involved. They're all three doing stuff, and that's what I really like because they use it, they are using, like I said, the fullest potential of a three-guitar lineup, and they're all involved, and they're making these songs more hectic, more melodic, and more epic, <laughs> essentially. So praise to all of them. Rhythm and guitars lead guitar, melodic sections, everything just sounds great. If you're a guitar lover, you're going to like this album. You're going to like what the guys bring once again to this Iron Maiden record, the next one. Steve Harris on bass guitar, of course, the guy is doing an amazing job here. His bass guitar, of course, is turned up. He's doing some very awesome things on the bass and what else is there to say? Every album, even if it's an album that I don't really like that much and I don't really think it's a good album, in my personal opinion, Steve Harris has always done a great job. And for the most part, everyone else does a great job with what they're doing, but it doesn't mean that the stuff they're actually playing is great, but they at least sound great and they're at least they're doing something. So even if I say, okay, well, I don't like this album that much. Steve Harris is still going to be doing a great job and the rest of the band is as well. It's just that the music, I think, just didn't come across as good for the most part. But for this album, The Matter of Life and Death, Steve Harris, great job. Nico McBrain, of course, the guy is legendary. He's just, he's a beast. Age does not affect him. Once again, he's showing that age does not matter because his drumming on this album, uh, <clears throat> Drumming on this album, on this album, uh, not, not that crap, that voice crack, come on. Nico McBrain, legendary. He's doing a fantastic job. He's freaking Nico McBrain, you know? Age does not matter to him. He's going to play whatever he wants. He's going to put whatever he needs to into these songs, and he will make them better for it. So, Nico, a fantastic job. All the guys did great. What did you expect me to say? It's basically copy and paste at this point. With all these records that I'm loving ever since, like, you know, from... Brave New World to now and even in the 80s. It's copy and paste because they all sound great. You know, there's nothing else really to say. So, you know, you can't, you know, no hate. You can't hate me for basically praising the albums when they're basically all, all most of the part, they're all good. So Matter of Life and Death, another great record. And we'll be finally getting to the final frontier in a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. What do you guys think of Matter of Life and Death? Let me know in the comment section below. If you liked the video, like the video. If you want to see me or more of my stuff, click my name to see more of my stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.